Okay, so I wanted to Okay. Sorry. I wanted to just do a really quick talk about oops. All right. Sorry. Can you see me? Can you see it still? Sorry, it went off for a minute. You good? Everyone good? Okay. So I just wanted to do a quick call about um, managing your business, which basically comes down to kind of just keeping track of everything, which I know can sort of be overwhelming. But if you're wanting to really turn this into a business, um, you kind of have to treat, you have to treat it like a business um, right from the start. And I thought it'd be a good time to talk about it now since it's January, we're coming up into tax time. For, so for those of you that um, we're coming off of last year, I'm going to talk about some stuff that you can use like as tax write-offs and things, and then um, things that you can do, ways that you can track for the upcoming year to start. So um, first of all, we really have to have a CEO mentality. You are your own boss. Nobody's keeping track of what you're doing. So it's up to you to write down what you want your goals to be for the year and then work on reverse engineering them and making them happen. Um, I show, I'm showing you my vision board that I wrote down last year, which actually was part of a training that Becca was doing for us. I think maybe like Emerald to Diamond training and we all had to make these vision boards and put, make them visual and print them out and put them on our computer and everybody had to share them. So um, I wrote them all down and some of them were really scary goals. Some of them were kind of like, well, it's probably not going to happen, but I'll put it down there anyway. Um, and then I just, you know, set to kind of try, doing my best to make them happen. And when I sat back and looked at what I had done over last year, I realized that I had actually gotten really close to a lot of them and, and hit some of them. So, um, you can, I mean, I posted this in our team page, but you can see like, I mean, I put down bringing in an extra thousand dollars a month, which was, that was a huge goal for me. But now that's something that I'm doing every month, at least, um, so my success club trip being fully paid for, um, include getting the $1,200 bonus. That was something that when I signed up for the success club trip last year, I had no idea if that was going to happen. I had no idea if I was going to get kicked off the list for not hitting success club or um, have to pay out of my own pocket for this vacation, um, which I don't have to pay anything. Um, and then like SE 10 every month. Um, I always thought that that was sort of this lofty goal and people that said, well, I, I hit SE 10 every month. I'm like, well, yeah, but how do you do that? Because that's, that's hard to do. Um, and it was, you know, it was hard and there were times where it was happening, um, at 1145 on the last day of the month, but it was, it happened and it's happening. So, um, so you can see that writing down a vision board, um, it, they don't even have to be beach body related. They can just be goals that you want to hit for the year. And if some of them happen because of like financial things that beach body brings to you or, or um, physical attributes that beach body brings to you, um, you know, it doesn't matter. It's just being more goal oriented in general and having a list and having them written, written down makes them more likely to happening. And also putting down specific dates, putting down specific numbers, um, things like that, instead of just saying, well, yeah, I want to make extra money. Um, I want to, you know, become diamond. Well then, but put a date or, um, you know, put down how much you want to be making and put down actual hard numbers so that, uh, you can reverse engineer ways to make that happen. Um, tracking your business. So this is something I didn't start. I started in February of last year. Um, actually after my success partner, Lisa had done a call on something very similar to this and she had shown her, um, Excel document. I use it in, in Google, like Google sheets, but she used her, showed the Excel document that she used. And when I saw all of the things that she was tracking, um, I thought, well, okay, that's not that hard. Really all you have to do is you log into your coach online office, um, at, you know, on Thursday after every payday goes through and you can check all of these things and it's really easy to do. It takes me about five minutes to put everything on my tracker. 
Um, and it's important because for one, you can see where you're thriving. Um, you can see where you are lacking. And then you can see all of your small successes that happen over time because there's a lot of the times where you feel like nothing's happening or nothing's moving or you're like, well, I know I made money, but I don't know how much because if it just goes into your general bank account, it sort of gets lost in just, you know, your numbers and not really seen as like extra income that you're bringing in. Um, so I just did, I just did a couple examples down at the bottom just to show how things changed over from February, um, basically from pe February 5th to December 31st. Um, I went from 89 downline coaches to having 678 downline coaches, which, you know, those are not personally sponsored, but those are just coaches, signing coaches, signing coaches, and everyone that's in my downline. Um, it, I went from 287 Instagram followers to 996. As of today, I think it's like 1100 something. Um, in, and then in February I was at 802 Facebook friends and I'm now at 1,038 Facebook friends. So that's kind of cool to see how numbers um, like that can change over the course of even just a few months. And then I just did a quick snapshot of, it's kind of hard to see on here, but um, from when I was Emerald to the first week that I went Diamond in June 18th. So even you can see um, things here like my team bonus cycle that I got was $14 when I was Emerald and it, the first week I was diamond, it was $162 with a matching bonus. Um, and oh, let me see what else. Um, so yeah, it's just kind of neat. And then you can see like my, um, my week leg volume was 91 for that week and it went up to 889 um, in June. So you can see where, things um, change and it's kind of, so it's really neat to look at from February all the way through um, to December. And now that I'm getting close to that February 5th marker, I'm gonna, it'll be really cool to kind of look back at where I was a year ago and see how things have changed. And I'll put this tracker, um, I think Becca might have it in the group, but I'll put it in our team page um, so that you guys can see it. And also at the bottom of this, I didn't show in here, but, it automatically, um, I automatically have it set, or Lisa set it, but I, I just used what she had, but um, set it to take or to show what percentage um, for taxes, percentage for um, business fees or what you want to put into your business, which we're going to go over, and then for um, like tithing or, or saving or anything like that so that you're not just, you don't just see this number of like, you know, $400 and think that that's all straight income and you can go like below it because you know, we all have to pay taxes. <laughs> so, um, first off is saving right, right off the bat is saving 25% for taxes. Um, make sure that um, you have a separate checking or savings account for this so that there are no surprises at tax time. And if you've ever been a freelancer or, or a consultant or work for yourself, you know that come the end of the year, um, you have to take all of that money that you made and pay a portion of it back to Uncle Sam. Um, double check with your accountant on which tax bracket that you're in because you may need to save more um, and you may need to save, save less. 25% is a pretty good average. Um, and it kind of leaves, it usually leaves you a little bit of a cushion. Um, but just double check with, you know, who usually does your taxes. So make this a priority for sure. Do not forget about this because if you make more than $600 in a year, you know, it's required to report it on federal taxes. And there's nothing worse than having it, you have made all of this money and then it comes time for tax time and you don't have any, you don't have any money left to, pay, to actually pay it. And so you're having to dip into savings or um, borrow or, or, or do something just to be able to pay your taxes. Um, and then state taxes may have different requirements. For example, Florida has no state income tax, so we don't have to worry about that, but um, just take a look at what your state requires. Uh, business expenses, uh, usually I say, try and save about 35% into that because as an entrepreneur, you need to invest back into your business. 
most of these things are tax deductible. So you can use them as tax write-offs, um, which is great <laughs> at the end of the year. And that includes your coaching fees. It includes your monthly Shakeology, performance line supplements, whatever you want to get. Um, any new programs that you want to buy. I buy every single new program that comes out. Um, like 22 minute hardcore is coming out in March, but I think because we're running a business, um, it's hard to promote something if you don't, if you haven't actually used it yourself or if it, you haven't actually tried it yourself and it's the best kind of, um, promoting and advertising, um, to be doing it yourself. So to be building excitement when something's going to come out and showing it when you bought it and you purchased it. And that's how you're able to get your customers and challengers into wanting to try something new. And especially, and Lindsay said this on our call the other night, but like women are, I mean, we, most of our um, clientele um, are women <laughs> with, you know, maybe there's a few men as, as exceptions, but for us, most of them are women and women are known to want to be trying new things. So they're more apt to, say, oh, there's a new program coming out. I'm going to try it. <laughs> let me buy it or let me buy something new from you. So that's a good thing. Um, personal development, which is can be books, webinars, anything that you're spending money on. If you have an audible, um, an audible like the monthly account, you can use that as like a tax write-off because that's your, your personal development things. If you're getting books on there every month, um, prizes for your challengers, gifts for your team, um, if you have a like page and you're putting money into doing pr promoted or boosted posts, that money can all be um, tax deductible and is, is also important to um, invest back into your business in that way. Summit, Super Saturdays, and other events. Um, um, those usually have a small fee. I mean, Summit is larger, of course, um, like Super Saturdays are usually like 20 bucks. And then sometimes there's other events going on in your area that are beach body related. Um, transportation and meals, if you, when you go on success club trips or retreats, like um, the diamond retreat that I went on um, in November with Becca. So like my gas money and stuff to drive and my mileage to drive um, to St. Augustine. If I had flown, it would have been my plane ticket to fly. Um, that kind of thing. I mean, that's all coming out of my pocket, but that's all tax deductible. Um, certifications. So like at Summit and also sometimes in your area, they do um, like, like cert you can get certified to teach like PIO and size and other different classes that you could do at like gyms or, or whatever. But those cert certifications are all tax deductible. And then it's a little bit of a gray area, but some workout clothes. So like you've seen, I'm sure some of the other coaches who've gotten like photo shoots um, or who've had to teach classes, things like that. Um, so workout clothes in that aspect, not just workout clothes that I'm going to go buy a whole bunch of new workout clothes um, because I want, you know, I have new workout clothes to work out at home with. That's not necessarily, but if you're using it to like promote your business or like doing a certification, um, hold on. Uh oh, sorry. You got to see how I can mute everyone. Um, so save now so you don't have to say no later because uh, I know that there were like maybe people that couldn't, couldn't sign up for the success club trip because, you know, it was $300 out of pocket and that's maybe it was $300 that they didn't have. Um, there's people that weren't able to sign up for summit because it's like such a big expense or having to get out there. So if you save now and you have that money set aside to specifically put back into your business, then you don't have to say no when these event, when these things come up. And especially with some of them, um, it's, you have to have a really quick response on it or, or there's not going to be room or anything else available. So make sure you are saving money like that to put back into your business and then make sure you are actually investing back into your business because that's only going to help you grow. All right. Um, savings, debts, and dreams. So this is um, more of a personal one, I guess, but I think um, for most of us who are trying to use this to really um, build, a, build financially um, into something big, um, this is sort of the way that 
that I've kind of looked at it. So, um, and you may all, you know, maybe you guys work in a different sense as far as like saving money or, or things like that. But I always feel like this is sort of a good rule of thumb is, and you've heard, all heard it before, but building your emergency funds account first, you can pick your amount, but make sure that you have one. Um, you never want to be in the red or be, uh, you know, be not able to afford if something comes up or if you need new tires on your car or like in our case, a couple of years ago, like our air conditioner broke and we needed to buy a new air conditioner, which was $5,000. Um, so 1500 to 3000 is a good start, but it's at least, and then it's just money that you don't touch, but you're putting it away. So you're building to have this emergency fund. Once you've done that, um, paying off your debt, starting with your top item um, and working your way down as fast as possible. Um, and then after all your debt, minus your mortgage, because that um, most of the time people don't count, I mean, that's debt, but that's debt that isn't counted when you're trying to do like your the snowball thing. Um, but after all your debt is paid off, you work on your three to six month income savings so that you can have a bigger cushion of things. And then the last thing is working on like long-term wealth. So paying off your mortgage, starting college funds for your children and then saving towards your dreams life. So, um, this long-term wealth could be things that maybe are on your vision board. Um, they could be, it doesn't have to be so big. Um, but maybe it's just being able to go on a vacation with your spouse and be able to do that on a yearly basis instead of doing it like every 10 years. Um, but that your your emergency account and then your debt has has to come first before you um, go towards this long term wealth because you're not going to live your dream life if you're not able to pay off um, the things that are kind of holding you back. So let me stop this. Um, 